Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing a discussion about the potential for an outbreak of thunderstorms this afternoon and evening across parts of the UK and Ireland. I'm going to start off by showing you the forecast that I made this morning. This is not official, so if you want official guidance, look at the Met Office and those kind of agencies. But this is my kind of personal opinion of what might happen with the thunderstorm risk. Uh, and you can see the main areas to look out for are the level 3 and 4 areas in orange and red. Uh, and those are issued across Northern Ireland, uh, Ireland, Scotland, and then down south into Wales, the Midlands, and Southern England. And then in particular, we have this level 4 across Northwest England, the Midlands, and Wales. And these kind of general zones are where I expect the risk of lightning to be highest. Uh, and then within the black dashed line, that's the severe area, that's where I think the risk of strong to severe thunderstorms, so large hail and damaging winds, is expected to be highest. Uh, and if you want some kind of uh, details explaining this then check out the discussion on my website but I'll kind of be doing that verbally in this video anyway. So it's always a good idea to kind of start with the background weather pattern when you're doing a weather forecast and that's what we're going to do uh, right here by looking at the mid-level winds uh, and this is on pivotalweather.com I'll put the link in the description but you can see here on the 500 millibar chart that we have a nice trough of low pressure which is situated kind of across parts of Ireland and into the Irish Sea. And if you're not familiar with these weather charts, the way you can tell we have that trough is because we have the uh, curved black lines here, which is showing where the pressure is locally lower. And then additionally, we have the kind of stronger winds out ahead of it, uh, as you can see there, highlighted by those kind of brighter blue and purple colours. Now, the trough is going to be important because as the air is, has got a lower pressure, there's going to be a rising motion to it. And rising motion is always good for thunderstorms because it allows those updrafts to develop, which allows kind of proper storms to get going. And so we're going to expect a zone of rising air in this general region, kind of like that ahead of the surface trough. And then as that moves north during the afternoon, as you will see here, so by kind of three o'clock, that's moved further north. And so by then, the zone for ascent, which is the fancy word for rising air, that is going to be located more across parts of Western Scotland, Northern Ireland. But notice how the kind of bottom area of the trough, so this sort of section down here, kind of lags a little bit over Wales and southwest England. And that likely will mean that we have a prolonged uh, period of rising motion in this kind of zone here, which will be a good, a positive thing for thunderstorms, and possibly will have more than one round of storms uh, in this zone during the evening. Uh, by kind of six o'clock, though, you can see the main kind of trough is now clearing into Scotland, so the storm risk will be shifting north here by the afternoon. But like I said, that does kind of have a lag over the southern half of the risk area. Now, having what rising air is one thing, but you also need moisture, and that's what we've got here. Uh, you can see the dew point are just above the surface, uh, they're quite moist. We also have a wind out of the southeast, so we're advecting, which means moving, uh, warm and moist air all the way through the UK. So all the way into Scotland, Ireland, Ireland and Northern Ireland, we've got those green colours indicating where the air is pretty moist. But you can also see that those green colours are kind of focused across Wales, uh, southwest England. And so that's where our instability is highest. And so instability is a very important aspect for storms because you need that rising motion, like I just said, but you also need energy uh, in the air to kind of take it for the rising motion to take advantage of. Uh, and that's what we're displaying here. So it's kind of a low resolution chart. This is a high resolu resolution chart of CAPE, which stands for Convectively Available Potential Energy. Uh, and the higher, the better. Generally, the higher the number, the more lightning there will be, the more active the storms will be, the stronger they will be. Uh, and you can see this afternoon, we've got the green and uh, yellow colors across the chart, uh, particularly kind of across Scotland, parts of uh, Northwest England, Ireland, uh, Northern Ireland and Ireland, and then especially across Wales uh, and the Midlands. That's where this model is anticipating the highest instability to be. So you can kind of see the background pattern is really favouring severe storms. Uh, sorry, not severe storms, but kind of storms in general. We have the upper, the upper level rising motion from the trough. Then we have the kind of advection of a moist and unstable air mass into the UK and Ireland. So we're kind of uh, the ingredients are all there, so we're going to look at the details now to see the exact evolution of storms. Now we're going to take a look at the current surface pressure chart across the UK. Uh, this is on xcweather.co.uk, I'll put the link in the description. And this is the observed uh, pressure, so it's not forecast, this is actually happening right now. 
And what you can see is corresponding with the upper level trough, we also have a surface trough. So where the isobars are kind of bent like that, as you can see, that's where we've got locally lower pressure. So rising air, remember that. And then also you can see the wind direction, which is highlighted by the blue arrows, are showing a zone of convergence along this trough. So you can kind of imagine, uh, I'm drawing this imaginary line here to indicate where the wind direction is coming together like that. The, as you can see there, we also have the uh, lower pressure, so the air is rising. And so this is looking like a very likely zone of initiation for storms. Init uh, and initiation just means kind of the first development of thunderclouds, cumulonimbus, etc., etc. And actually, you can see if we line that up with what's happening right now on the radar, you can see it's giving you a pretty accurate idea of the kind of current situation. And that's why I always say kind of the background pattern and the current observations are very important for a good thunderstorm forecast. Uh, and if we look at this in detail, you can see we have a band of strong storms oriented from the northwest to the southeast, moving through uh, Ireland, Northern Ireland, and then down back into Ireland there. So if we play through the loop, just to give you a kind of an idea of how that might look, uh, you can see they're generally moving to the north, but the direction of the kind of entire uh, band itself is more like this. So the band is moving like that, the individual cells are moving more to the north. So this general region within the level three here are likely to see thunderstorms, <coughs> including the risk for flooding, maybe some small hail and strong winds <coughs> over the next hour or two uh, as these storms move through. So we've got initiation across Ireland. We're now starting to see initiation across parts of Wales uh, and southwest England. So there's a storm there. We also have showers and storms starting to develop. And this is also likely to be associated with convergence. And if I zoom in on the row model, you can see uh, first we've got that band as expected there. But also, if I show you the wind pattern, you can see that the wind barbs are kind of a bit kind of funky in this sort of area here. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but one direction is like that, another direction is like that. And what you've actually got is a localized convergence zone aided by topography uh, in this sort of region here. And when you've got the winds pushing together at the surface, uh, that creates rising motion. And as I explained, rising motion is good. So no surprise that you're getting storms forming in this region here along that convergence zone. They will likely move north and then we're going to get further storms developing with the uh, trough and other convergence uh, in this region here. Now in terms of severe weather, one tool we can use is uh, soundings. And these give us a nice kind of 3D view of the atmosphere. Uh, and I'm going to show you this shortly. So if we take a sounding from, let's take one in central Wales, you can see the area between the white dashed line here and the red line, the thick red line, the visual kind of space between those two, so if I shade that out here, that is a visual representation of CAPE, which I talked about earlier, our instability and our energy for storms. And generally, the higher, the better, but also you want the shape to be quite even. You don't want the CAPE to be really, really long and skinny, so for example, uh, like this. This is very long and skinny, but the energy will be stretched out through the storm, so the updraft is kind of not as powerful. Uh, by the way, these kind of the diagrams I'm drawing now, they're just hypothetical, don't take them too literally. Uh, on the other hand, if you have a, a very kind of short but thick, that might be good, but also the storms won't be very high. So you kind of want somewhere in between. Generally, the thicker, the better, because there's more energy kind of per like kind of space of storm. But what we've got quite here is a pretty nice uh, in-between uh, with large amounts of cape around a thousand and locally higher, which would be more than enough for our storms that once they've initiated, like we've got now, they will grow and become stronger. Now, if we take a look at our wind profile, it's not particularly uh, impressive. Uh, so for severe storms, instability is one thing, we also need wind shear, which is kind of differences and changes in the wind's uh, speed and direction, which will kind of organise the storm, the updrafts and downdrafts will be separate, and then we get a more kind of risk of severe thunderstorms like hail, uh, and then on the extreme end, kind of tornadoes. Luckily we don't have that today, but one thing that is interesting is that if you take a look at the storm relative wind, uh, and this is kind of slightly complicated here, what I'm trying to show you, but... Uh, where did my okay, my pen seem to have disappeared? 
Uh, never mind. I'll just qu try refreshing the page just because it would be good. There we go. So if I take a sounding again from Central Wales, if you take a look at the storm relative wind, which is the kind of vector between between this white circle here and this little zero, so that red line that I just annotated on, that's our storm relative wind. It's quite large compared to the entire wind profile as a whole. And what that suggests is the updrafts will be fairly wide, and a wide updraft is better for lightning and for hail. So because the wind shear and the cape is not extreme today, we're not expecting massive hail, but because we've got strong lapse rates, enough cape, and enough kind of wind flowing into the updraft itself, there is a risk of hail kind of between one to three centimeters in size. So definitely some severe risk today. Uh, and then as the kind of uh, trough moves to the um, moves to the north through the afternoon, so if I go back to this chart here uh, and show you for, how about, yeah, let's do six o'clock. So as this trough moves to the north, uh, there it is gonna be across kind of this zone here, so I accidentally made the pen really thin. There's it's going to be across kind of Wales, the Midlands, and Northwest England, and where we have the kind of coincidence of the best upper level forcing and the strongest instability, we're likely to see storms growing upscale. That means kind of becoming larger, becoming more organised, and so it looks likely we're going to see a line of storms forming. Uh, and a hypothetical kind of illustration of this would be what the Arrow model is showing, which is a, an impressive line of storms all the way from northwest England down into Wales and the Midlands. Now, if this does happen, there will be the risk of severe wind gusts, or not severe, but strong wind gusts, likely in excess of 50 miles an hour. And if I show you something else here, the um, kind of relative low level moisture, which is the gap between this green line and the red line, is uh, kind of relatively for UK standards fairly large and you can see that here the, the gap kind of spaces out uh, as we kind of go nearer to the surface and what that means is that the low level air is has a, rel a lower relative humidity which increases the acceleration of downdrafts as they near the ground which means that your threat of strong wind gusts in excess of 50 miles an hour is higher and that's particularly true when we have a line of storms uh, as we are expected to have here. Uh, let's see what the UKV is showing. Yeah, the UKV is not showing a line of storms, but still showing fairly significant clusters of storms. So in terms of severe thunderstorms, because we know there will be active lightning, but we are looking at kind of hail across parts of Wales, and then perhaps uh, strong winds across parts of Northwest England. But really anywhere uh, in this zone could see those threats. And of course, anywhere in this black zone could see kind of hail, strong winds, flooding. And I mean, the storm, uh, the line of storms in Ireland looked particularly nasty, so we could already be seeing kind of hail, strong winds there. Now, as we move to the evening, uh, the threat will become more conditional, but we'll focus once again across parts of Scotland. So here's our trough here, forecast to be at six o'clock. We've got nice, strong uh, uh, winds here. Well, not super strong, but relatively strong. So we're going to have an increase of wind shear across Western Scotland, and we are likely to see an increased kind of advection of moisture uh, into the area. I'm going to see if I can get the right chart here. So yeah, you can see the kind of um, the uh, air does become moister across Western Scotland during the evening, as you can see, just about as we have this kind of blob of green moving to the northwest. And if things go well, um, and if this kind of movement of the moisture into Scotland is not blocked, then we are likely to see an additional round of storms across Scotland kind of five o'clock onwards and that's indicated quite nicely by the UKV model here. Now bear in mind whenever I'm showing these high, resolu high resolution models they're just one of many scenarios but I do agree because of the upper support, support from the trough because of the instability storm development does look fairly likely in this zone here and that's why we've got the level three uh, there. So potentially a fairly active day of weather potentially the biggest thunderstorm event of the year, at least in terms of homegrown storms. Um, but I hope this video kind of gave you a bit of an explainer into what we're expecting and why. Uh, and thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to, uh, and have a great day. Bye-bye.